Totally unique in terms of the, the Big Ten game, not only game, uh, back to the Big Ten game. Uh, in the past, we've played two consecutive, but uh, obviously feel very good about uh, the Jimmy V in the game versus Texas. Um, I don't think it was, a, it, was a, it was a really pretty game by either team. I don't think either team played their A game, but I do think both teams played really hard. Um, and we took that coming out of it. Uh, I liked our toughness, our grit. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we got out of Terrence late what we needed, you know, we needed one of our best players to go make plays and he did that and, uh, uh very encouraged by that. Uh, now it's, uh, Penn State, uh, one of the oldest teams in the country, if not the oldest, uh, a team that Micah does a great job with. They're offensively elite, uh, from three, from three, uh, they've got, um, <clears throat> I think 19 threes in one game this year, um, and uh, and then they're 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 a little bit different in that uh, Pickett, uh, who's a point guard, is really a five man, and uh, you know, he plays to a lot of post ups, um, and um, they were very effective with that against us last year, um, and I would expect that they've tried to do they have tried to do that just about in every game again this year, so. It uh, gets very hard to support off him because of their ability to shoot it. Uh, Seth Lundy's having a great year uh, shooting the ball. Uh, they've added a couple of portal guys that, uh, again, shoot it, make plays. And, uh, you know, they're, uh, uh, they're one of the better teams in terms of offensive execution. Um, it'll be very, very challenging for us, and we've got to be on point and, and very, very good in terms of what our defensive communications are uh, against this team. So have to play well and um, uh, and do that against a very, very good offensive team. Coach, where, uh, you had Jaden was in the game down the stretch against Texas. Where, it, it's, where's Sky at right now in terms of his, his confidence? Is he, is he still confident? Sure. I mean, it's no different than Sky was in the game and a lot. I mean, and... Uh, didn't have anything to do with that. You go with the hot hand. You go with the guy who's playing well, and uh, uh, that's no reflection of, of, of on Sky. It's uh, uh, Jay was doing a lot of good things. I let Terrence set for a long, long time because that fight was playing well, and it doesn't have anything to do with who starts or who is what. It's about who's playing well, and, and uh, those guys were playing well, and I stayed with him. I stayed with Terrence till the. You know, on the bench until the um, under four media. So, um, you know, that's uh, I'm trying to win a game. I'm going to play who's playing well. Let's talk about Matt. He was telling us about you know, finding out some new allergies he had and getting his diet right. And just what difference have you maybe seen as that process has kind of moved along where he's getting maybe more himself? Well, he can play 28 minutes in a, in a basketball game like he did the other night and not play 12. You know, and, and be exhausted. Uh, I think that's given him a, a tremendous amount of peace of mind. Um, you know, it's made his body feel better. It's made him feel better mentally as well. Um, and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing worse. I've, I've, uh, you know, I've known people who have allergies, and it's it's a it's a pretty uncomfortable feeling, and and uh, so it's it's been a big help to him, and uh, uh, we're excited to finally figure that out. You mentioned it at, after the win against Texas, but can you talk about as a coach trying to, you know, figure out game to game who's hot and what do we run to try to get so and so who's feeling it right now? Because it seems like that could be a lot of different guys on any given night. Yeah, it's the unknown. Um, it, you know, I, I think the one thing is we've got a, we've got quite a bit of variety, and we know what's pretty good for us offensively. Um, you know, we I think we've gotten to a point where we we like our scenarios with certain guys in the game. Um, what that looks like, and uh, uh, you know, it, it may not always be the same guys doing it, but we know the scenarios that we're pretty comfortable with, and uh, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, again, it's 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 Coleman triggering a lot, you know, great pass uh, to to find Jaden off 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 a post up. Um, it was, you know, it, it's it's Terrence. Uh, in certain situations, uh, more and more with Matt, uh, you know, it could be Sky, 
Uh, it could be RJ. RJ, you know, big shots, and he's he's playing great. Uh, so you know, it's just it's just the the feel of the game, what the defense does, how they're guarding it. Uh, and then I think that's why the Texas game was a little bit ugly. Is you know the defenses were very very good on both sides. Is there anything you saw in the offseason that gave you the sense that Sincere could find a role and, and acclimate rather quickly? Because freshmen sometimes takes a while to find their footing. Yeah, it's, um, you always go into it to a season with freshmen very very open minded because they've never dealt with adversity, they've never dealt with um, not being the best player on the court. And so you know, I go in very open-minded. Along, along those lines is, you know, you then have to figure out how they handle coaching, how they handle the adjustment of facing size. Um, I've always loved his motor. It's the thing that attracted me to him. I love his doggedness, you know, but I love his ability to just grit and fight and, um, and, but you had to see how that translates. And uh, physically, he's stronger than he looks, but he's still slight. And, uh, you know, so you go in and you say, okay, you know, is this something that, that, you know, do we talk about redshirting because he gets, you know, two minutes every five games, or is this something where you get, and, and to his credit, he has earned the right to get every minute he gets, and, and and more, and so I was very open-minded, but you're always cautious with, with freshmen to see how they react to uh, a whole lifestyle change in terms of their life is turned upside down, not just on the court, but off it as well. Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, how good Texas's defense was to push you out of your comfort zone, and uh, you know, despite all that, you're able to overcome it, and your guys were able to, you know, overcome it when it mattered. Um, how well does that bode for your guys as you're going into Big Ten play where there are also a bunch of tough defenses? Yeah, and, and it, it was it was different in that game because, you know, I mean, Texas is old. They're really athletic. Um, and and they're, they're a team that makes you earn it. And that's something we didn't do in the and I think we grew from. I think we found out, you know, okay, here's a couple things that we, we've done. Um, I'm probably as proud of what we did defensively against them than what we did offensively because we got stops when we needed to get stops. And that's something we had not been doing. So it was kind of a mixed bag there. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, this, you know, the team we played tomorrow morning is, is – not going to make mistakes. You know, they they do what they do extremely well. They they try to take you out of transition and they make things hard. And and um, you know, you've got to run really good offense and you got to do that every night in this league because the, the, the coaching is exceptional and and um, and most most teams are very very well schooled on the defensive side. So that game with Matt in New York was that something you kind of sense was coming? Have you kind of seen a difference from him the last maybe couple of days or week in practice? We've seen that for the last two or three weeks in practice. Uh, we've seen that that become a, you know, he, he's had days where he's made eight, nine, ten in a row, and you're just like, okay, s some point that's coming, and and you know he's doing a lot of really good things positionally on the defensive side. Uh, you know, I think he had three blocks. Um, you know, most of them on you know, verticality type blocks and, and you know, it's just being in the right position. So we, we've seen it all. It just needed to, to translate. And, you know, he's a, he's a very, very good isolation player. You know, he's, a, he's got that ability to go get one. Uh, all we did was try to, you know, we ran a little double drag to put a five man on it. And they switched and, and you know, he's pretty hard to handle in that scenario. And, uh, you know, got him in some isolations and then post-ups. Uh, he's really hard to handle because he can really pivot. Uh, so we've seen that in practice, and it was great to see it in, in, in that situation, and it was, it was much needed. Coach, what, what, is a, what is a team that shoots a ton of threes like they do? How, how does that change what you, got, you do defensively, and what, what are some of the mistakes that you can't make against a team of shooters? Yeah, this is a big communication thing. I mean, you've got to, you've got to talk and communicate. Uh, we can't cover every action they do. I mean, they. Mike has got an NBA background. They run a lot of actions. They run a lot of blurs. They run a lot of step ups. They. 
Um, they create a lot of, they want to try to create as much mass movement, a lot of confusion as possible. And then you, uh, uh, you know, they've got a, 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 an advantage in, in a lot of scenarios with, with picking in the post. And, and uh, you know, he just, he, he just plays bully ball and backs you in, backs you in, backs you in, and, and, and you can't get a lot of support because of, of their ability to shoot it. They're playing really small at times, playing Miles Dredd at the five, uh, along with Lundy, and, and, and um, you know, there's, there's um, you know, a lot of space to cover. So we just gotta have great, great communication with these guys. If I could get one more about Sincere, uh, is there anything, or maybe not, unique about a freshman coming in and seeing the defensive side as kind of their path to an impact rather than being somebody who can light it up and score, or you know, needed to score a ton off the bench? Yeah, I think he's he's um, had great wisdom brought upon him. I mean, in terms of okay, here, here's how I can impact as a freshman, you know, and whether that's his, his coaching, his mentality that he's been brought up with, he is ultra competitive. I mean, ultra competitive, and and that bodes well. He's as competitive a guy in terms of winning and losing at anything as we have, and. Uh, you know, so if that means I've got to guard to win, I'm going to guard to win. And I appreciate that about him because that is a very mature way and he's, he's been brought up that way. And, you know, if he, can, if he could go block a cheerleader's jump shot, he's going to go block a cheerleader's jump shot to win. I mean, that's how competitive he is. He's not taking an easy arm. Yeah, you spoke a little bit there about the Penn State, but just how unique is their style especially offensively compared to any of the other uh, nine games you've had so far? Well, we've seen a lot. Of, we've seen a good amount of five-out stuff. Um, I don't know if we've seen um, guys that truly shoot it like they do. I mean, they're, 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 there's not a bad shooter in the bunch. And we talk about Pickett's post up. I mean, he's getting off four threes a game as well. And, and, he's, and he's, you know, you start looking down there and they're all in their – in, in their mid 40s, shooting, you know, percentage wise, shooting threes. Uh, they're playing faster. Uh, so we've seen five out stuff when the team's playing space, and, um, you know, we've seen a good, actually a good amount of that, but, but maybe not with the uh, ability to shoot it at all five spots like that. Jim Pickett had 17 rebounds against Michigan State. What do your guards have to do to? I don't know, slow him down, at least, you know, in that group. Yeah, hit him. I mean, when, he, when Shy goes up, hit him, not stand and watch, because he's, he is a, uh, he's, he's a, he's a very, very good defensive rebounder. Uh, <laughs> that starts a lot of their transition. Uh, he's a very good passer uh, in the open court as well. And, uh, you know, he gets, he gets uh, a lot of those guys' shots because of his defensive or rebounding and, and, you know, I use Iowa a little bit. You know, Iowa get down to the open court and, and got those guys running. And, you know, they're not running to the paint. They're running to the three-point line. And, and he does a great job of being able to to, um, to, to, to catch it, pitch it, and, and uh, push it up the floor. And he's, he's, he's very good at it. And you've talked about Matt's just adjustment to being in a new place after four years of Baylor. But how do you feel like he handled all of this other stuff on top of that? And still has gone out and he gave you what he could to yeah, like sort of feeling better. Like an adult. You know, he hasn't been, it hasn't been something that he's made an excuse about or, or whined about or, you know, okay, I, I'm going through going through this and, and let's get it right. And and now it's, it's he kept pushing through it. He's always been an unbelievable teammate. He's always been a, a guy that, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing well, but I'm going to get there. And, and you know, he's handled with tremendous maturity, which is, is, is uh, uh, nice to see. Coach, not, not to give away the whole game plan, but the, when a team like them does go small, they go small a lot. Do, do you prefer to match that, or do, would you rather go big uh, and, and get the ball in the paint? Depends. Depends on flow. It depends on the vibe of the game. It depends on, you know, why they're doing it. Um, you know, there's there's more to it than just, you know, it's 
just doing something to say you're doing it. I mean, you got to feel whether they're, you know, why, why are they trying to do it? You know, or, or are we getting hurt with this? Or are we changing because of this? So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's more the, the mental side of it than just a, a straight answer. I'm not trying to avoid it. It's just, there's, there's a lot of scenarios that will determine how you, how you counter that. In, in terms of the late game scenarios you were talking about, where it could be anybody, but is there anything similar to what you do with Terrence, that what you were doing with Io, maybe late in games where he has to touch it, and that's just the way it is? It's a pretty good option right there. He has to touch it. <laughs> and, um, you know, we did so much with Io in, in, in uh, ball screens early in his career, and then it became, you know, then it became isolation. And, you know, those are things that he grew into. I couldn't do that stuff early in his, early in his career. Um, you know, we're, we're just trying to create a little bit of space uh, in a lot of those situations for Terrence. And he is very good in, in, in isolation. He doesn't always need to see a ball screen or he doesn't need to see that. So uh, open space is, is, has been really good for him. We figured that out in the UCLA game. Just a housekeeping note, we saw Connor with the boot on his, I think his left foot. Uh, what was his status, and what, particularly in practice, I know he's big on like, when you guys run scout, like what's that impact have on you guys? Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, he's, he's dealing with a hot spot, and uh, you know, that's something that you don't want it to become worse. So it's, it's uh, keeping him out, it, he had soreness and tenderness. Uh, he goes so hard, and Connor's a really good player. And um, you know he's a he's that big, strong, versatile. He's really athletic. Um, you know, and that's a that's a you know it's a, it's a guy who could have imitated Pickett, you know, or a guy who could have imitated Timmy Allen. And um, you know we haven't we haven't had him in practice, so uh, that, that 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 hurts our team. It's along that whether it's uh, stitching up Terrence Shannon on the fly or helping Matthew Meyer. Get his diet going because uh, he mentioned uh, Paul Schmidt. Is he mm -hmm. kind of been a little bit unsung guy here? Uh, not that he's looking for it, but an unsung part of this whole thing this year. Not unsung. We missed what 68 or 69 games last year. Um, yeah, if you don't have a great training staff and a great medical staff and and people who are are uh, in tune with your players uh, constantly. Um, you know that can be a huge detriment to any program, and uh, you know we're we're thankful Paul's been here a long time. He's got great relationships uh, in the medical world, and not just here locally, but but abound, and and uh, you know our association with Carl and, and everything that they do. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's when when guys aren't right, we want them going to Paul, and we want them, you know, no matter how. Small it may seem, small becomes big if you don't deal with it. And um, so, uh, yeah, having that, having a, having a great relationship is, is huge. And Paul's done a yeoman's job here. Anything else?